good morning. We ask that you please take your seats. We are about to begin the procession. Thank you.
big yeah. yeah. We can take this out then. No. Just take that one off and kind of slide it in there.
Let us pray. Dear Lord, as we enter this time so full of cherished memories and the exaltation of a job well done, we are so grateful for your guidance. Your hand has guided all of us, students, parents, and faculty, as we have strived to fulfill the promise of Athens Academy and work toward excellence with honor. We have truly felt your blessing as we have worked and played with patience, honor, joy, and empathy. We are truly grateful for each person and experience you have placed into our lives and the wonderful way that they have shaped us into an instrument of your harmonious and magnificent plan. We feel your gentle hand guide and assure us. We are also grateful for the calmness and clarity that you bring to our lives, particularly in times of uncertainty and distress. You are truly a place of shelter and safety for us and all our families. Your presence has had and will continue to have a profound impact on the education and lives of all at Athens Academy. It shines in the warmth of friendships, glows brightly in students reaching for academic greatness, and burns in the passion on athletic fields and stages. As the road that these graduates has traveled for the past few years turns in a new direction, we humbly pray that each member of this class and their families feel your love and peace as they pursue their dreams. Grant us the wisdom to see your vision for our lives, the humility to constantly ask what we may do to more fully honor and reflect you, and the clarity of vision to fully see how special, wonderful, and beautiful is your work. Amen. It is now my pleasure to introduce Jackson McKillop, who will be the first to share memories from his lower school experience. Jackson. Thank you, Ms. Chovoff, and good morning, everyone. My journey at Athens Academy began when I was a four-year-old in Ms. Weekly's office for a prospective student principal interview. This meeting consisted of thorough discussion of shapes, building blocks, and colors. Toward the end, she asked if I wanted one of the chocolate chip cookies in a jar on her desk. A four-year-old me, who would want nothing more than a cookie, second-guessed that instinctual desire and figured, this must be part of the test. I responded, no thank you. My mom says cookies have too much sugar. I hope I made a good first impression. When I think about the class of 2020 in the preschool and lower school years, I remember that it was where we started this long journey we would make together. And our experiences then made us the people we are today. The first person I had talked to in Ms. Bormer's class in 2005 was Wyatt Smith who had just stopped crying after his mom had left. <laughs> 14 years later, he looks a little different, but he's still the same person. In kindergarten, Butler, I'm sorry, this is one of the corniest jokes ever. In Miss Insko's class, we got our big folders toward the end of uh, either the semester or the year where we put all our artwork, and they have our names on them, our full names. Butler's full name is Mary Butler Adams. When we got these folders, Butler holds her up and goes, now when I want to marry someone, I can just hold up this sign. See, Mary Butler Adams. 
I remember looking around the room to see who else heard that because I did not know how to react because I like could tell it was a joke but like I, I didn't feel like laughing. <laughs> 13 years later I still think about that whenever a substitute teacher would say Mary during roll call. In first grade John Chester led the American Revolution as George Washington and let George do it. Little did we know how fitting that would be 12 years later when John brought the star-spangled ping-pong paddle into the senior lounge. It's also worth noting that that year was the first lap we would take together around the Spartan Center Court at the holiday celebration. In second grade, Weston Rupert starred as Little Bobby Joe in the play, and we were reminded countless times that Little Bobby Joe still had to go. I had a singing part in that play. Shout out to Mrs. Billmeyer. And as dreadful as that was, at least I didn't have to worry about a voice crack that I might do up here on stage 11 years later. <laughs> Third grade was the prime year for passing notes. Alec Brooks had a designated notebook that was perfectly sized to write and fold notes to be delivered to certain people he had something to say to. Liza, I had to walk across Ms. Thurman's room so many times to serve as Alec's personal mailman. <laughs> 10 years later, Alec's still pulling. <laughs> In fourth grade, John Jacobson became our grade's first meme. Ms. Naclario threw Jolly Ranchers at us at will, and our most valuable skill we have, if somebody was about to push us off the edge of a cliff and they asked us to name every single capital of every country in South America, I think anyone there would be able to accomplish it through the song we learned. Most of us regretted trying dry cocoa powder on Rainforest Day. Me especially, I coughed a lot. On the second to last day of lower school, I broke my arm in three different places on the playground during a flag football game. Without any more stories, that should tell you how intense recess flag football was in lower school. And that would definitely carry over into middle school if we remember Wyatt's interactions with Coach Chuboff every year. It was always something. And nine years later, a similar intensity could be seen through the countless crushed ping pong balls, slam paddles, fierce rivalries, and overall dramatic aura that accompanied the infamous senior lounge ping pong table. Finally, it would be wrong to not mention Mr. Yurik. The memories could go unspoken. Sumo in the Great Hall, banana peeling concerts at lunch, and of course, picture time. His uniqueness is something that we'll remember forever about our years we spent. I kept relating events from those years to now because the experiences we had then paved the way to how we are as graduating class today. To my class, thank you for laughing with me. To the school, thank you for the memories you've given us. And lastly, to my mom and dad, who I wasn't able to find it's okay. Y'all are out there. Thank you for letting me grow up on this campus. The sacrifices you make mean the world to me. I love y'all. Ananya, Ananya Das will now share middle school memories. Thank you. Thank you, Jackson. Once we started middle school, we felt a bit intimidated by the new freedom we were given. We didn't have to stand in straight lines anymore as we moved around campus, and thankfully, we didn't have to listen to classical music during quiet time at lunch. We also had the new freedom of getting whatever we wanted from the lunchroom, including, but not limited to, chocolate cake, cookies, and ice cream, with no adults telling us when to stop. I know I had fun, because I may or may not have had chocolate cake every day. <laughs> One of my uh, most favorite moments in fifth grade, through all the ups and downs of beginning middle school, was probably one study hall. As we were doing our work, Hayes began to hiccup. During the especially deep silence that study hall consists of, everyone was getting quite annoyed. Mrs. Land asked him to drink some water and count to 10 without breathing, but the hiccups stayed. 
Then slowly, Miss Land walked up behind him and shouted, Boo! as loud as she could, making Hayes jump up 10 feet in the air and scream one of the highest pitched screams I've heard to this day. <laughs> Everyone in class froze, then burst out laughing wholeheartedly. I would say this is one of my favorite random moments to date. We slowly began to get acclimated to middle school the next year. In sixth grade, we began to explore books and their social context, as well as have a new class called SFA. Outsiders Day was an awesome experience that included us dressing up as either greasers or socias and determining in court whether Johnny was guilty or not. As a person on the jury, I had to listen to both sides of the case and determine his innocence or guilt. I remember that I was siding with the prosecution until Layla's final speech for the defense. Though I don't remember a word she said to this day, I know that I felt incredibly moved and had heard one of the most powerful speeches during that hearing. Once all the jury went backstage, we felt that our entire opinions had shifted from Layla's one speech and we unanimously voted innocence. I think this was one of the first times that we were beginning to see each other grow up and mature. We were beginning to articulate our ideas and emotions and learning from each other. It seemed like we were really growing up and it was a big deal for us. In seventh grade, we learned about immigration to the United States and the perils of that journey to find a better life. One of the most memorable moments happened on this trip. Once we were on the ship, we had to sit in cramped quarters with people throwing tangerines around us and with rats all around. We had a clear view of the upper class deck who were sitting on bean bags, sipping juice with their own orchestra playing for them. Then we got off the ship one by one. Even though we were the first to board, me and my husband, Sammy, accidentally put our real names on the clipboard and not our character names, causing us to be the last ones to get off. Then we were examined. Before we were not allowed to stay, but we were not allowed to stay in the US because my husband, Sammy, was nine feet tall, making him the tallest man in the world. I found it quite funny that Sammy's height was the reason we got kicked out of America. Finally, eighth grade arrived and we were the top of the chain. We finally ruled the school, or at least middle school, and we owned it. We were given even more independence and we were finally being prepared for high school. This was the year that we began having the also hated exams. We also began to learn more about the world. One of my favorite moments in eighth grade was the UN. We all got to be a country and speak our views on current issues in the world. After a lot of preparation, we finally had our UN day. We all dressed up and went to different rooms to state our cases. We then went down to the Harrison Center to have our largest discussion. Though I don't remember exactly what we were voting for, I remember that it was important for there to be a unanimous vote on the Security Council, or maybe just the permanent members. It was all going well until the UK thought it would be hilarious to veto our proposed bill and prevent it from passing. I'm telling you, we were this close, I mean this close, to getting the bill passed. And I remember finding that to be pretty funny, and so did most of my peers, but Mr. Tillman thought otherwise. I stopped laughing very quickly and realized the grave error we made. I think was this was when I began to realize that we weren't really just kids anymore. We were beginning to really grow up and we started to understand that our decisions had consequences. Middle school, I remember, I thought would be one of the best times in school, but high school was a whole different ball game. Eleanor Colonnelly will complete our experiences as she shares her U.S. memories. Thank you, Ananya, for taking us back to those fond, awkward middle school memories. 
From braces to the seventh grade dating epidemic after our first school dance, we really lived through the experience, trying to identify where we belonged. But without those times spent in the classroom or in the gaga ball pit, we would, we would not have been prepared for the transition to the next phase of our lives, upper school. I remember being very nervous on my first day of high school, my worries, having to pick out real clothes. I'm back down to the bottom of the school food chain. My first class ever was Spanish II with Miguel Cooper. What an experience with his flamboyant dancing and daily translation slideshows. Although it was eye-opening start to my year, he welcomed many of us into what was now our lives, and I'm so grateful for that. Interim week arrived in no time, and from the ropes course to dragging a canoe across the lake by swimming, our advisories really began to gel. Next stop, homecoming. Girls brimmed with anxiety over who was going to approach them with a poster and a theme token, all awkwardly, to be archived on Instagram. The dance was different from middle school dances, but with most of us gathering on the outskirts of the Tillman Center. But it was really fun. Before I knew it, I was running in my first state cross country race, and I found myself bonded with upperclassmen who took me under their wings. By winter, Sadie's space dance gave girls a taste of the nerves the boys were feeling during homecoming week. As the spring emerged, I joined the cast of Grease, made my DNA replica jewelry for biology, fed the geese with Mr. Patterson, learned that freshmen sat in the back of the orchestra for a reason, and bid farewell as the seniors eventually disappeared off campus. With a first year under my belt, I was ready for the next. Sophomore year was a whole different ball, game, ball game. New privileges, free periods, and not being the new kids, we found our place. Interim week was a blast. We visited Atlanta to watch Atlanta United beat the New England Revolution 7-0 after a meaningful tour of the Civil Rights Museum. Homecoming week was Star Wars The Clone Wars. The Noisemaker Committee was established, and they dominated the competition with their lightsaber shakers that were a hit with the preschoolers lucky enough to get their hands on one. Our talented football team made us all proud. Many of us traveled to the bins in a snowstorm to cheer them on in the state championship. We relived the spirit of the 70s at the Sadie Hawkins dance and pushed through the remainder of our classes, from making ice cream with Miss Boyd in period two chemistry class to taking our first AP exams, we found the balance of work and play this year that would set us up for the next year. Junior year was among us faster than we could have known, and that meant applying to colleges was just around the corner. We rallied behind our studies, loading up and challenging ourselves and our schedules. Although our interim week trip was cut short due to Hurricane Florence, our amazing college counselors found a way for us to visit schools including UNC, Mercer, Barry, and UGA. We collectively dominated the homecoming week challenges with our Spider-Man themed posters and float, and we could finally find our way into the nucleus at the dance floor. Our football team dominated yet again, playing Elka at the Benz once more. Many of us continued to take language classes and were rewarded with an induction into the language honor societies. Our well-rounded class enjoyed art, drama, music, and athletic classes during our extra free periods, and it shows. The pressure of the SAT and ACT loomed over us, but we rose to the challenge and went in on a painful amount of Saturday mornings in order to reach our goals. In the spring, we represented a variety of costumes at the When I Grow Up theme of Sadie Hawkins, continued to work hard in spring sports, and attended our first and only prom. We were prepared for the year that we had worked towards our entire academic careers for. Senior year was among us before we knew it. Finally, we were the role models and the leaders that we had prepared to be. I remember the excitement that many of us had pulling into the senior lot for the first time, ready to paint our cars for the first week of school. From 12th man to the student body leaders during Monday meetings, we had accepted our responsibilities and were ready to make the best of the year. I learned quickly, and I learned quickly that it was impossible to do any homework in the senior lounge with constant ping pong games going on, but I also grew very close to many people in my free period by spending time there. I was so thrilled to lead the Kairos retreat in the fall and was overjoyed to see my classmates welcome the tradition. 
Our last homecoming arrived. From glitter to beads, we showed nothing less of school spirit during our Mardi Gras theme. And that spirit never died down in the fall as we cheered on cross-country conquests led by Graham Blanks, fall athletes on senior night, and celebrating college offers that started rolling in. One act put on a fantastic show at regionals, volleyball seniors played hard in tournaments, and cheerleaders ran on the dreaded mile Mondays. We became the leaders of our service day projects and the role models for our first grade buddies, planting tulips and lifting them up for the ornament ceremony as our seniors had done for us many years prior. Basketball season came with student sections were packed. Model UN led a successful season and swim and wrestling seniors were recognized for their dedication to late night practice. The next semester, a few of us began writing the spring play with the Alliance Theater. Luminaria had a good attendance at the Foundry, and we managed not to overheat at the winter-themed Sadie Hawkins dance. And before we knew it, we were on spring break with no idea that we would not return back to school in person. I remember sitting at breakfast after hearing the news, unable to process what was going on. Many of us had to bid farewell to our senior seasons weeks later, whether it was tennis, track and field, soccer, orchestra, golf, or theater. But with the disappointments, we continued our studies and extracurriculars online. With undesirable circumstances, we made the most of our senior year as we could, and I believe that we truly left an impact with how we handled this semester. Our upper school memories would not have been the same without everyone sitting here and graduating today. We have grown, celebrating our eventual college decisions without being physically together and staying in touch, and are ready for the next few years. Athens Academy provided us that space to blossom together. Thank you, Class of 2020, for your individual qualities that made us so special and memorable. I would like to invite Mr. Thorson, head of school, to the stage. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our 50th commencement exercises. Thank you to the class of 2020 for giving us all something to look forward to. My name is John Thorson, and I am thrilled to be here with all of you. Thank you, Jackson, Ananya, and Eleanor, for sharing your memories from yesteryear on Spartan Lane. I never expected. That is a phrase that we've heard a lot these days. Of course, most of the words that follow are not positive or uplifting, but stating the surprise of our current condition. We need to flip this narrative and shift our gaze to the positives. I never expected we would be celebrating the amazing class of 2020 outside in the fresh air and under a bright blue sky. More importantly, we should look to the future and realize that anything is possible. There are many possibilities in front of you, and you do, in fact, have a very large say-so in how you respond and rise to the occasion. Now, more than ever, our society has risen to support those who have been underrepresented in the past. Now, more than ever, people are working with one another to find a vaccine and seeing positive results faster than anyone could have imagined. Now, more than ever, People are expressing their creativity and making beautiful art and music, which we will enjoy for years to come. We will see dramatic changes in the decades to come, and I expect you will be part of our progress. After all, whoever expected that anyone other than an astronaut could fly into outer space? Whoever expected to drive 100 miles an hour in an electric car? Whoever expected to take classes from the world's greatest universities from your living room? These things are not only possible, but happening. I have tremendous confidence in you and your class because you have a history of flipping the narrative and making good things happen. You are empathetic, caring, and concerned about one another. You are engaged in the broader community and give of yourselves to make this a better place. 
You persevere through obstacles and unknowns and come out on the other side with a smile. These are hugely important traits which will serve you well in college and life. Each of you is prepared for what lies ahead, and I hope that you are prepared to fill in the blank that follows, I never expected, with a positive and uplifting response. Our world needs you, and I am happy for our community, and especially your families, as we celebrate each of you today. In a moment, we will hear from our valedictorians who have worked hard and earned this honor through dedication, perseverance, and a lot of work. I have tremendous respect for A.J. Peppers, Elliot Williamson, and Logan Williamson. So please join me in congratulating them on this well-deserved honor. They were given their valedictory medals earlier this morning. After they share a few words, we will confer each of your diplomas. This is by virtue of the partnership which exists between our talented faculty and staff, you, our graduates, your parents, our board of trustees, and the many volunteers who have worked tirelessly for the benefit of Athens Academy. Congratulations and thank you for your good work and more importantly, your stellar time at Athens Academy. You make us better. We will miss you, and please do come back and visit often. Logan. Good morning. It's great to see everyone after the chaos that was the end of our senior year. The past four years have been quite a ride, and I hope everyone feels good when reflecting on our time together. It's important to recognize the people who helped us get here and to thank them. To all the parents and grandparents here, we are incredibly grateful for you encouraging and supporting us all these years. To the rest of the grandparents, families, and even seniors who had to stay home and watch online today, we are sorry that this day didn't happen the way we had always planned, but we are grateful for the sacrifice and responsibility it took for you to all stay safe away from such a large gathering. To the teachers and mentors here at Athens Academy, on top of getting us through high school, thank you for making the switch to online learning with us this year. Thank you to all the senior class advisors for the guidance you've given us especially Dr. Levat. Thank you, Dr. Rogers and Dr. Reed for helping us all get into college. Finally, I want to thank Mr. Thorson, Ms. Jollitz, and the rest of the administration for keeping Athens Academy functioning through the easy and the hard times. To be honest, when I first sat down to write this, I had no idea where to start. I don't know how to write a speech, much less a third of one. The past, I don't know how to write a speech. The past year has been full of confusion, uncertainty, and the unknown. Um, for me, this speech is just a final piece of the puzzle. We began our senior year having no idea where we would go to college or how we would spend the final high school year before our lives would change. But by March, instead of personal college worries, we had much bigger problems at hand. Our lives and world would be completely changed almost overnight. But we didn't let that stop us. We moved forward with online school, completed our exams, continued planning our futures, and now we are here today graduating together. So if nothing else, we've learned in the past few months how to continue life when everything seems to be out of our hands. We've learned resilience and strength, even when faced with unknown challenges. On top of this, racial inequality has been pushed to the forefront of everyone's minds. Since March, Violence and injustice across the nation have brought people together, together in, the in the largest social, social movement, movement in our lifetime. Our lifetime. Many, of Many of us even participated in bringing, in bringing attention, attention to these, to these issues, issues, whether online or in person. Although meaningful change is coming, it's unfortunate that it took this long to happen. It's a scary moment in history right now, but it is also an opportunity to come together. We didn't get to finish our senior year the way we had always envisioned, but this means that we share a unique experience. 
As a nation feels fractured, we need to remember who we are close to, what we value, and what we can do to contribute to the betterment of our community and the world. Although we did lose the end of our high school career, let's remember to stay grateful for what we do have and to stay positive through the difficult times. Focus on the good memories, whether it's Mr. Patterson feeding the geese or Mary Brooke and Downing at the Valentine's Day Assembly. Rely on the people close to you, speak up for who you believe in, and remember the community you are part of. COVID made, our COVID made our graduating class even more unique and will be closer because of it. I'm grateful to all of you in the class of 2020 for the times we had together. Thank you, and I hope the next four years are even better. I'd like to welcome Ellie to the stage. As unique as the end of our senior year has been, our class is one of a kind. Successful in athletics, academics, and service, no other grade has accomplished what our grade has. From five national merit finalists, multiple nationally ranked athletes, and some brand new clubs, our grade has made a major impact on our school. We also had our college trip canceled by a hurricane, made it to the bins twice, and had a very interesting Kairos. Plus, no other grade can say Ananya performed karate for them every single talent show. However, our grade has lost much of what makes Athens Academy great. From prom to Six Flags to spring sports, our grade has missed one of the best, most exciting times of our lives due to the coronavirus. And we are continuing to miss out because of this pandemic. With more and more schools moving online, many of us will not have the opportunity to have the college experience we expected with our freshman year completely upturned. Although we could see this change as a negative, this change has given many of us to do amazing things in its place. Whether it's taking a gap year to travel, devoting the time we would have spent on campus to instead start volunteering in our local communities, learning a new skill or language, or getting involved in a new organization, we have a unique change that no other class has ever had. And we were made for uncertain times. Born in the aftermath of 9-11, we were the first group of kids to grow up in a brand new America, one fraught with fear and unease. However, we have thrived under the pressure, and it has given us a unique ability to face the unknown more than any other group. Whether it's when a hurricane canceled the college trip, when the juniors refused to throw an after party, or when our senior year abruptly and unexpectedly ended, our grade has learned to come together to face these challenges, making us even stronger. It's times like these when we learn to turn back to our communities. Whether it's your family, friends, neighborhood, or city, we must turn back to help those who surround us in times that threaten to pull us apart. So commit yourself to helping those around you. Get to know those in your community who you may never interacted with, people of different races, religions, socioeconomic groups, or beliefs from yours. Defend each other when necessary and stand up for what's right. Keep your community strong as the world seems to fall apart because our unity is what makes our grades so great and our unity is what will help us through these crazy times. I want to thank everyone in my community who has made the past decade so great. From Jack Cook, the first friend I had at Athens Academy, to Mrs. Newland, who has stood beside me for the past six years and everyone in between. I want to thank every teacher, student, and parent who has helped us get to where we are today. So here's to our next chapter. I'm sure we all do great things. Okay. AJ? Thanks to Logan and Elliot for providing both an eloquent and apt consideration of the modern trials and tribulations that we as a society face and need to address. Uh, being a bit of a numbers guy, as I'm sure that many of you are aware of, and taking into account the fact that numbers can often speak louder than words, uh, I'd like to provide some numbers that I feel encapsulate our experience both as Athens Academy students and burgeoning young adults. 1,446 days ago, a majority of us be began our first day of high school at Athens Academy. 
Today, 75 of us gather to cap off this tenure as graduates and peers. A remarkable 148 days separate today's graduation and our last day having class in an Athens Academy classroom, which I most certainly believe has to be a record of sorts. While we may certain, currently sit together in one singular location, in the rapidly approaching future, we'll be embarking on divergent paths with the class of 2020 attending a total of 40 different universities. Expanding on this, 10 of us will continue to pursue glory in the athletic sphere, whether it be on the track, the diamond, or the gridiron. Outside of our scholarly and athletic careers of the past, present, and future exist cultural landmarks from politics to sports to media to technology that are able to truly capture our generation. In 94 days, many of us will be, will be eligible to vote for the first time in a presidential election, deciding between the continuation of the third president of our lifetime and the inauguration of the fourth president of our lifetime. A grand total of one championship has been won by major Georgia sports teams and franchises since our freshman year, a period marked by tragedy and embarrassment rather than triumph. We saw a backup quarterback wearing number 13 deny Bulldog fans their first national championship in 37 years. We saw the St. Louis Cardinals score 10 runs in one inning to demolish the Braves in a playoff elimination game. And perhaps most memorable of all, we saw the revered Atlanta Falcons somehow blow a 28-3 lead in 18 minutes in the Super Bowl. Simply put, being a fan of Georgia sports teams carries a very similar existence to being a fan of the Washington Generals. In the film business, we continue to bear witness to the Avengers' domination of the box office, with 10 films being released in our high school careers. At the same time, we saw Dwayne The Rock Johnson launched into becoming Hollywood's highest paid star, starring in nine films that collectively grossed over $5.4 billion. In the music industry, hip-hop and trap music saw a respective return and rise to commercial prominence over the past four years, with 30 out of the 50 Billboard number one songs being, during that span being of that genre. To provide a window into technological development, eight different iPhone models have been released since 2016, bringing in what I'm sure is an absolutely ungodly amount of revenue. And finally, five years ago, we attended what I'm sure will most undoubtedly be the most legendary event of our lives in Alec Brooks's Bar Mitzvah. <laughs> While numbers can provide snapshots into our class's high school experience, they fail to capture the quirks, qualities, and qualifications that intrinsically define us. Such will present themselves in the way in which we uniquely contribute to our world. Whether it be becoming a professional athlete and serving as an inspiration to your community and communities worldwide, or establishing a successful business that provides individuals with new services, or developing new life-changing technology. Each of us, the class of 2020, will ultimately stumble upon a purpose that we can be effective and successful in, but most of all, passionate about. And as we explore the abundant nooks and crannies in college and beyond, I encourage you, the audience, to stick around for a bit and witness us discover life's unread pages. Thank you for giving me the time of day to speak, and here's to a continuation of the festivities. Ms. Jollitz. Thank you, Logan, Elliot, AJ. Three very different young men, all equally impressive. Good morning, everyone. 
I'm glad you're here, and I wish we could have the entire class here together one more time. Unfortunately, for a variety of reasons, a few of our graduates aren't able to be here to celebrate. But I do plan to recognize them when we present the diplomas in a few minutes. But before I begin calling the names of our graduates, allow me to take a few moments to share a sampling of the achievements of this class of 75 students, 39 of whom have attended Athens Academy for 12 years or more, and the other outstanding students joining along the way. To begin, the 75 graduates from the class of 2020 received 248 offers of admissions to 96 different institutions. They will attend 40 different colleges and universities in 17 states and one Canadian province. These sen seniors were, were offered, excuse me, $5.4 million in combined merit scholarship awards, and this does not include hope. Five seniors were commended by the National Merit Program, five seniors were recognized as semifinalists, and 20 seniors are current AP scholars. And 15 seniors were inducted into cum laude society. The class also exhibited creativity in drama, art, and music. These seniors participated in the Youth Art Month exhibit at the Oconee Cultural Arts Foundation. Four seniors submitted artwork to the Piedmont Athens Regional Medical Center. Seniors played major roles in the advanced acting showcases, the Region 1 Act Competition, and Drama Club. One senior was selected as Best Actor at the GHSA Region 1 Act Competition. Four seniors played major roles in the devised theater project, the Collision Project, with the Alliance Theater in Atlanta, Georgia. Six seniors lettered in drama. Orchestra seniors won positions in the Athens Youth Symphony. Seven seniors are members of the Athens Academy chapter of the National Association of Music Education, the Tri-M Music Honor Society five seniors lettered in orchestra. The class also led the way for service in our school and community. Seniors led and participated in the school service activities such as cancer awareness, pajama, blood drives, father-daughter dance, rack month, adopt a highway, homecoming parade and celebrations, Monday morning meetings, student government meetings, class meetings, Kairos retreats, and many other projects. Seniors were instrumental in leading the 20th annual service day, which included 19 projects in four counties and served more than 400 Special Olympics, kids from the Special Olympics. Seniors created and grew service club opportunities in Downtown Academy, the Boys and Girls Club, and Athens Peer Court. Under senior leadership, the 15th annual fashion show raised money benefiting Athens Area Homeless Shelter, Boys and Girls Club of Athens, and Project Safe. In total, more than 35 organizations in Athens Oconee community were benefit, benefited with over 4,000 service hours and monetary donations by the class of 2020 throughout their time at Athens Academy. And finally, the class excelled in athletics. 64 athletes earned 275 varsity letters, and 33 were multi-sport athletes for an average of 4.3 letters per athlete. 19 seniors lettered for four years in one sport, 
19 seniors lettered in two sports senior year, and four seniors lettered in three sports for senior year. Three seniors lettered for four years in two sports, and two seniors lettered for four years in three sports. Two seniors were named the Athens Banner Herald Player of the Year for their respective sport. One senior was named the Athens Banner Herald the Best Preps Male Athlete of the Year. And finally, 10 seniors will be playing intercollegiate athletics next year. It's unfortunate that students weren't able to compete and participate in their activities at the end of this school year, as I have no doubt that they would have experienced even more successes. They're real, really a talented class. I certainly can go on and on, but I know that we all want to see the class members of 2020 cross this stage. We've all been waiting a long time for this moment, too long. So without further ado, I say, Mr. Thorson and Mrs. Sanders, I present to you the recommendation by the Athens Academy faculty that these students, members of the class of 2020, be granted the distinction and high honor of receiving an Athens Academy Diploma. <laughs> and so we begin. Hillary Gale Adams. Mary Butler Adams, cum laude. Kamara Adamobi Adogu. Noah Christian Allen. Kale Anderson. And once I read their names, feel free to applause one at a time. Batul Arpanar. Mary Brooke Barber. Mm. <laughs> Anna Claire Barkley, cum laude. Kennedy Graham Blanks. Well done, Graham. Trevor Allen Bone. Unfortunately, Trevor could not be with us today. Congratulations to Trevor. John Cameron 
Bostwick the fifth. Elizabeth Barnett Boswell, Boswell, excuse me. Chandler Stevenson Brady. Catherine Hurst Branch, cum laude. Alec Michael Brooks. <laughs> John Clark Burns the third. Right. Ethan Daniels Chambers. Brent Allen Chandler, Jr. Richard John Chester, the third. Theodore Layton Kronos. <laughs> Emma Marie Clark. Taylor Rose Clemens. Eleanor Scott Connolly. Jack Wesley Cook. All right, Jack. Well done. Luis Celeste Covington, cum laude. Zachary Alexander Daniels. Ananya Das Cum Laude. Ethan Wyslavzov Deagle. <laughs> I did it. Awesome. Well 
Kennedy Rebecca Drake. Caroline Elizabeth Edwards. Catherine Elizabeth Elder Cum Laude. Wyatt Michael England. Congratulations, Wyatt. Well done. Put that down. Joseph Cunningham Frierson the Fourth. Anna Robinson Hollis, cum laude. Charles Crawford Kalstorf. Hannah Catherine Cottrell. Charlotte Kimbra Knight. Christopher Stephen Nisley. Kurt Arthur Nisley. Ashlyn Taylor Krebs. Ashlyn could not be with us today. Congratulations to Ashlyn. Maura Lynn Lockwood. Charlotte Eleanor Luke Cum Laude. Charlotte could not be with us today. Congratulations to Charlotte. Karina Elizabeth Maffitt. Karina could not be with us today, unfortunately. Congratulations to Karina. Jackson Winchester McKillop. <laughs> Congratulations. Gregory Patrick Miller. James Hayward Miller.
Harold Worgen Muir IV. Sammy Mubarak Omer. Georgia Marie Paris Kumlade. Anjali Rajesh Patel, Cum Laude. Well Dev Bovant Patel. Anthony Job Peppers, cum laude. Samuel Fulbright Pittard. Benjamin Cole Reynolds. Mary Palmer Roberts, cum laude. Layla Josephine Rosenberg. Weston Cook Rupert. Anna Franklin Rutledge. All right, Anna, hold her down. Mm -hmm. Emily Dell Sherrier. Corey Alexis Slay. Wyatt Andrew Smith. David Emerson Statura. Nicholas Lloyd Statura. Christopher Ryan Thurman, Jr. All right. All right. Right. 
William Turner Trapnell, cum laude. Stephanie Reese Triglett. <laughs> Lenith Detrell Whitehead. Lenith could not be with us today. Congratulations, Lenith. Nicholas Daniel Wojorek. <laughs> James Malcolm Williams. Unfortunately, James cannot be with us today. Congratulations, James. James Mercer Williams IV. Unfortunately, James could not be with us today, and we congratulate him. Thank you. Joseph Logan Williamson, cum laude. Thomas Elliot Williamson, cum laude. Bryant Traveris Willis. Connor McDonald Wood. And Isabella Camille York. Ladies and gentlemen, may I introduce to you Athens Academy's newest alumni, the class of 2020. Congratulations. <laughs> Kate Branch, senior class president, will share her parting words of wisdom. Kate. Thank you, Ms. Schallitz. If you have attended a graduation ceremony before, it's likely that you have heard one of two types of speeches. The first focuses on the past honoring the extensive list of accomplishments achieved by the graduates, reflecting upon our countless shared experiences both inside and outside of the classroom. The second grapples with the future, asking our class to look ahead and establish goals which may be met throughout the rest of our lives, considering how we will utilize all that we have gained during our time as students moving forward. I could easily fill four minutes of your time today doing either of these things. I could ask you to marvel at the many accomplishments of our clearly talented class. As a class, we've thrived in athletics, academics, service, leadership, and arts. We've set school and state records only to break them again. 
We've won state titles and we've established school-wide traditions which will long outlast our class itself. But Ms. Jollett's covered all of this pretty well. So I could also ask you to consider what we will continue to do after we leave Athens Academy today. I have no doubt that our class will continue to cultivate the long list of achievements. As we have nearly every hobby covered, we are on our way to schools across the nation and Canada, including Ivy League admissions and Division I athletes. However, today I am choosing to ask you not to contemplate the past or the future, but instead the present. As a graduate myself, I understand this is not as simple a task as it sounds. Many of us are moving away in less than two weeks. Some left home over a month ago. So it's tempting to allow ourselves to spend our last few moments at home already one foot out the door. However, if I learned anything during the months spent at home rather than at school concluding my senior year, it is that anything can end at any given moment. So why do we spend so much of our time engrossed in the future when the future is never entirely certain? Instead, focus on the task at hand, not what lies dimly on the horizon. Because while we so often find ourselves seeking self-worth in the pursuit of yet another accomplishment, another award, more recognition, these milestones are not what instill value in our lives. Lives are measured instead as a series of small moments. I can clearly picture Mr. Bill Meyer's eighth grade English class as he filled the whiteboard with small dots, accompanied every so often by a larger circle. These large circles represented milestones, days like today, our high school graduation, while the, small, while the smaller dots signified small moments, interactions with peers, evenings spent with family members. As Mr. Billmeyer turned and asked a class full of seemingly uninterested preteens which type of circle occupied more space on the whiteboard, it became clear to each of us the significance of these small, everyday dots. So class of 2020, rather than wasting your time longing for Honors Day certificates or athletic awards, treasure the most insignificant of moments spent with your peers, your family, and your friends because value may be found in any moment if you so choose to look for it. This isn't to say that we shouldn't consider the future, just recognize its uncertainty, because moments will pass us by before we realize they're gone. As seniors, we were certainly struck by this harsh reality as we were told we would not be returning to finish our time as students at Athens Academy. At a transformative time in our lives for which we had so many high expectations, the world around us seemed to come to an abrupt standstill. So as a class and as a community, we had many options when it came to facing this challenge. During the spring, while seeing each other only through Zoom and FaceTime, we longed to be together one last time as a class. And finally, here we are. So rather than allowing this moment to be fleeting, as we so often do, take today to just be here. Celebrate yourself, your classmates, and all that we have accomplished as the class of 2020. I think Thoreau put it perfectly when he said, you must live in the present. Launch yourself on every wave. Find your eternity in each moment. Fools stand on their island of opportunities and look toward another land. There is no other land. Class of 2020, thank you for the experiences of my past and the potential of my future. But most importantly, thank you for this moment of celebration right now. I honestly couldn't have asked for a better group of people with whom to spend the past nine years of my life. Thank you again, and congratulations. Mr. Thorson will now conclude this ceremony. Mr. Thorson. Thank you, Kate, and thank you one and all. It continues to be a beautiful day, albeit a little warm. Please do take good care of one another in the coming hours and days. It will be difficult, but please respect one another's physical space as we leave the ceremony, and let's put our masks back on. Congratulations on this well-deserved honor, and best of luck to each of you going forward. Now on the count of three, captured by our drone above, Let's toss those mortarboards. One, two, three.